A lot of people genuinely think that internal combustion engines are amazing and they're better than electric motors. But when it comes to trains, well, we know that um, there's very clear proof that internal combustion has zero chance against electricity. China have just broken the record. They have the fastest train in the world. And it's just truly staggering. I mean, if you sat on this train, you would barely see any scenery. It's just going that fast. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. China has claimed a new speed record with a vacuum tube maglev train. Vacuum tube. Does this remind anyone of what Elon Musk was working on with the Hyperloop? I mean, everyone said the Hyperloop was just another Elon Musk crazy fantasy, but um, actually, China has kind of come up with their own version of the Hyperloop. China's biggest missile manufacturer is working on a Hyperloop. Kasic, or C-A-S-I-C, -S claims it's clocked the fastest speed ever for a superconducting maglev vehicle six in fact over 623 kilometers an hour or 387 miles per hour it's nearly as fast as a jumbo jet 747 airplane that was the speed in a low vacuum tube just two kilometers or 1.2 miles long so there's been a lot of critics saying elon musk's idea of this hyperloop was just ridiculous it shows you that he's an idiot he's a moron i've seen a lot of people say this the hyperloop's idea was a failure now the reality is that tesla never actually tried to build it uh, spacex never tried to build it elon musk never tried to build it he just said hey this is an idea and use it if you think it's good well guess who did china's biggest missile manufacturer they're saying it works and it means that you can travel at 623 kilometers an hour. Incredible. Hyperloop trains have become more or less a punchline in certain parts of the technology world. They're sort of mocked. It's shorthand for ultra high tech projects that make grandiose claims of immense speed and efficiency while ignoring large elephants in the room that leave them with little practical chance of success. Basically, um, when you say, oh, it's a Hyperloop, it's like, a reference to something being a joke or just purely fantastical. Someone has an idea like a child, childlike idea and you just mock them and say, it's, oh, it's a hyperloop, that's a joke. Well, here's the thing. It's not really a joke anymore. The idea is simple enough. Take the vacuum tube messaging systems of the 1800s, upsize them until they can fit whole maglev trains inside them, then suck all the air out and blast those trains around at thousands of miles per hour enjoying insane levels of efficiency. Newatlas.com says that there's no air drag or wheel contact to sap power and slow you down. So you can go Mach 5 speeds through a vacuum tunnel without so much as a sonic peep. New York to Los Angeles in, well, the time it takes to have a coffee and go to the toilet. Well, maybe not quite that fast, but, you know, not that far off. Now, here's the thing. There is a bit of a problem here still. Maglev trains and the infrastructure needed are very, very expensive to build and deploy. Uh, that's already without needing hundreds or thousands of miles of perfectly airtight tube constantly being sucked at by vacuum pumps 24 hours a day, or at least when they're in use, or the potential disaster if pretty much anything goes wrong at those speeds. Now, there probably isn't a whole lot to go, long, go wrong. I mean, you think about the dangers of an aircraft flying in the sky, being affected by weather and um, animals, you know, birds and geese and all the kinds of things that could go wrong with an aircraft, especially internal combustion as well. I mean, that going on at 10,000 meters above sea level seems a bit insane in comparison to this idea of um, flying along in a tube, which is basically ground-based. But anyway, it's still one of those concepts that keeps popping up. Elon Musk famously proposed it, built a tiny example in Las Vegas. Then he farmed the concept out to other companies, not for sale, just for, for free, basically. One of which of those companies has now become, well, defunct. Musk has been accused of whipping California and other states into a froth, says New Atlas, over the idea just to tank support for public transport projects. Now, do you agree with that comment? I personally don't, but a lot of people do. 
Either way, there are companies still trying to basically perfect this idea. They think it's just too good not to give it a go. There's one that actually might have the right mix of population density, government cooperation, being China, and the money to get it done. China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, or CASIC. CASIC has built a two kilometer test section of low vacuum tube, the longest ever such facility in China. For reference, if atmospheric pressure at sea level is about one bar, low vacuum is between 0.3 to 0.001 bar. After numerous slow speed tests over the last several months, one of which is the subject of the nine month old video you're seeing here, the KASIC team recently sent its T-Flight high speed flyer down the track for its first stable magnetic levitation run. And while it's not yet releasing the exact speed, the estimate is it was over 623 kilometers, which is 387 miles per hour. That time was set last October and it made it the fastest train in history. Let's break out the old back of the envelope. Now for some simple mathematics here, assuming we have say about 500 meters or 1,640 feet for safe stopping, that means the prototype vehicle might have accelerated at a little over 1G. That's a bit quicker than free falling, but without air resistance for about 17 seconds before slamming on the brakes at about 3G of deceleration. However, that works in a maglev situation. It might have accelerated significantly quicker though, at about 2G. It's top speed halfway down the tube, then slowed at a similar rate. Either way, that speed is absolutely bonkers. It's incredible because this is just the start. This is the beginning. Imagine how fast one of these trains could go in 10, 20 years from now when they perfected this technology. You could be looking at speeds of over 1,000 miles per hour. Kasich says, the flatness of its test track is within 0.3 millimeters tolerance that the six meters diameter vacuum tubes have a geometric size error less than two millimeters and the entire pipeline can be returned to its normal pressure within five minutes. Kasich is pretty stoked. They're pretty happy with this test. They think they've done a really good job, which they have. They're saying it validates the interaction between the test tube, the vehicle and the track, but they're not done. Phase two calls for the track to be extended 30 fold to 60 kilometers or 37 miles, which will allow the train to be tested at a target speed of 1000 kilometers an hour or 621 miles per hour. That's what they're going for. That's as fast as a 747, a decent whack faster than many airliners. In fact, after that, it might make sense to, well, build them in cities around the world. Think about it. Uh, you could have them as hyper fast ways to get from the edges of the fringes of the city to the middle of the city could make transport drastically faster, massively different. I mean, much of the pop world's population in cities lives on its middle and outer fringes. And it takes these people an hour, two hours often to get to work. This would mean it could take less than five minutes. So is the Hyperloop just one big pipe dream, just one big joke? Well, it seems probably not. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.